Welcome back, Rivals. This is Zonia, and you are in the zone. Today, I'd like to dedicate this episode to the newer UR players. Every game has its own terminology, and UR is obviously no different. It can be embarrassing for some to ask questions about things that they maybe feel that they should already know. So for this video, I'd like to try and cover most of the terminology that you can expect to run into on the message boards, and in my other videos. Then, I'll explain a few of the basic abilities and bonuses in a bit more detail, since they can be hard for some people to understand. So after this video, you should be able to understand almost all the terminology on the boards, and feel comfortable with what everything in UR means. Oh, and if you still have questions, please feel free to leave a comment down below. I'm happy to answer any questions anyone might have, and I'm sure many of my other viewers would be happy to help answer your questions too. So. Here's a list of what terms we'll be covering in this video. There should be links over each term that can take you directly to it in this video, so feel free to click on one while I'm reading them off. AS, FPC, Junta, PC, and Sense. Power, Damage, and Attack. CR, LD, and RB. Grax, Trin, and Scrum. T1, T2, and Yellow. Mono, Full, Half, and Splash. Permaban and Player Ban. WOP, or WAP. Old, and Kill Shot. SOA, SOB, COB, plus LPD, plus PPD. Manip, heal versus regen, random and no random. Leader, big five or B5, tan man. R1, R2, R3, and R4. Deck setup, P full and zero XP. OP, virtual, conditional, DR, poison versus toxin, cancel, and order of effects. Well then, rivals, let's get into it. First up are AS, FPC, Junta, PC, and Sense. All of these are simply abbreviations for clan names in UR. AS is for All Stars, FPC is for Fang Pai Clang, Junta is for La Junta, PC is Pussycats, and Sent or Sense is Sentinel. Most of the other clan's names are almost always written out in full, but these clan names are occasionally written in shorthand. AS, FPC, PC are probably the most commonly used. Up next is Leader. Be careful, this term actually has two different meanings. Leader can refer to one of the characters in the leader's clan, like Timber, Vansar, Amber, Morphin, or Ashigaru, or it could refer to the leader of one of the clans, for example, Drain for Vortex, Noctezuma for Hurricane, Pericles for Riots, Ayrton for All-Stars, or Bowden Power for Bangers. Clan leaders aren't particularly special, but they do tend to be one of the strongest in their clan, though not always. They hold a special place in the hearts of many players, and most of the people who like the clan will seek after them for the ones that they really like. Anyway, just make sure that you're clear about which one it is when someone talks about it. Up next are Power, Damage, and Attack. These are the basics. PWR is for Power, DMG is for Damage, and ATK is for Attack. Remember that attack is calculated by taking the card's power after applying abilities and bonuses, and then multiplying by the number of pills that you use for that turn. Then, they figure in any of the other abilities and bonuses which may affect the attack based on the abilities and bonus, as you can see on the card here as well. Benefits or losses will always be maximized on the card. Next is the Big Five, or B5. The Big Five, or sometimes shortened further to B5, reference the five ultimate cards in this game. The five most expensive cards, Lee's Turiya CR, General CR, Guru CR, Kiki CR, and DJ Core CR. These cards are the Big Five, the cards that most people will never own, and would make your deck super, super powerful. Each one has a price tag of 5 to 9 million clints right now, and after you realize that spending a thousand credits will often only yield about 500k on a normal but well-planned pack buy, that means it's going to take a lot of time and money to get a hold of even one of these. Well, unless you're really good at events, or you're good at ELO and get lucky on the random CR draws. Up next are CR, LD, and RB. CR stands for Collector. These are the cards which appear in gold. These cards have been retired and cannot be found in packs. These can only be obtained as ultra-rare prizes on the token wheel, with less than 1% chance to get them, and they vary based on the value and type of token you use, or by being a top ELO player for the week, where prizes will vary and the winners are chosen randomly among the top players, or if you're really lucky, through events. LD stands for Legendary. These are the cards with the purple nameplate. They can only be obtained when their LD missions are active, which lasts for about one month a year. You must unlock the fifth mission before time runs out, and can finish it any time afterward to obtain the card. It must be unlocked before the month is over, though. These cards cannot be bought or sold, and you can only receive one of the card. Finishing their missions a second time, or more, will reward you with 10 credits, which is a very generous prize. 
RB stands for Rebirth. These cards differ from CRs in that they are the exact same card as their RB originals, or as I like to call them, CRBs. These are reserved for older cards with outdated artwork. The only difference is, in fact, updated artwork, so they will be comparable with the new site. So the older version of the card is essentially a CR, except it has a replacement that is still available in packs. CRs, however, are gone forever. The admins have also mentioned that there will most likely never be a crossover between CRs and RBs. So if a card gets an RB, you don't have to worry about it ever going CR. For now, at least. As RBs are new cards, they will have outrageous prices for the first few weeks, because they will never appear in new blood packs, meaning the number of them is very limited, thus making them very valuable for at least a short while right after they're released. Over time, their prices will fall, though, so somewhere around probably the original version's price. Up next, we have one of my personal favorite cards, Tan Man. This is a reference to Tanariva CR, the leader of the Uluwatu. His name's hard for many people to spell, and it's quite long, so people often just call him Tan Man. Guess it also helps that he's kind of a surfer dude. Next is Grax, Trin, and Scrum. These are short for Graxum, or Graxum, RB, now, or let's just stick with Grax. Okay, the same can be done for the other two aliens from Vronk, Trin, and Scrum. R1, R2, R3, and R4 just signify which round that you're talking about. Round 1 through round 4. As for T1, T2, and ELO, these refer to the type of deck you have, specifically the number of stars. T1 means a 25 star limit, T2 means no star limit, but at least 26 stars, and T1 is slightly different from ELO. ELO also means a 25 star limit, but no cards that are banned in ELO mode. T1 has no limit on which cards that you can use. For all formats, these restrict the use of doubles, and all require at least 8 cards. Next is the deck setup. This refers to how your deck is built, about how many 2, 3, and 5 star cards are in your deck. An example might be a setup of 5, 4, 4, 3, 3, 2, 2, 2. Generally, star counts are kept together and are in descending order. Don't write it like 5, 4, 3, 2, 2, 3, 5, 2, 4, because that's, that's just a mess to read. Next are mono or full, half, and splash. This also refers to the type of deck you are using. Mono means that all 8 cards are from the same clan, whereas half generally means a 4-4 split between two clans. As a side note, it is generally accepted that half decks are a bit more risky, but almost always worth the risk, and are almost always superior, and have an 87.5% chance of having two cards from both half decks appear in your hand. Personally though, I still generally prefer mono. Splash refers to just having one card from another clan in your deck so it won't be able to obtain its bonus, but because of its base stats and its ability, it's definitely worth using. Next is P-Full and 0 XP. P-Full is a term that is rarely used nowadays, but it stands for Pre-Full. Cards that weren't fully developed were once allowed in ELO gameplay and other formats, so Pre-Full cards sold for more because you can't unlevel a card. To a certain extent, people will still pay more for a Pre-Full card. Pre-Full often references cards that are 1 star from being fully leveled, but it could be at any level. Or So either it's a 3 star, 4 star card, a 4 star, 5 star card, or so on. The best prices will generally come from 0 XP cards though. Uh, this just means a card that is still at its lowest level with no XP at all. Many people make the mistake of selling cards fresh from packs for the same price as fully leveled cards. If you do, you're basically throwing away extra money, which will vary by card. 0 XP cards are akin to mint condition cards. XP is something like a ding in a card, which matters to certain buyers, myself included. Put one XP on the card and its value can drop significantly. Not everyone cares, but there are buyers who do, so always check how much a card is selling for at zero XP, because you may be able to tack on a few more hundred or even thousand clints onto your sale price for the card, especially if it goes CR. Next up we have Permaban and Player Ban. The ELO mode does not allow certain cards to be played in it every week. Each week, there's a player vote on which cards should be kept out of ELO for the week based on those which were used the most in the previous week. Anyone can vote that achieves over 1,050 points for the previous week in ELO. I believe you also get more votes for higher ELO scores. The cards chosen by players for temporary bans for the week are only temporarily banned for the week and are known as player banned ELO cards. Permaban cards have been permanently banned by the admins for being too powerful for ELO. Those bans are only in effect for ELO mode, however. 
There are no banned cards in Tourney, but there are cards with varying penalty amounts. You can still play them, but you'll get less points for winning if you draw them. A good tactic for tourneys is to use ELO ban cards with no tournament penalty, since many newer players don't realize that you won't be penalized for doing this. Survivor mode is absolutely free, and the entire point is to use your most overpowered cards. Next up is OP. In case this is your first internet game, OP means overpowered. These are cards which are far too powerful for their own good. They are often banned from certain modes because they would make the game unfair, heavily favoring the person with the overpowered card. Usually these cards are the first with their type of ability, or very old cards which were released before the creators knew any better than to make a card like that. WOP, W-O-P, means win or pay. The person who asks you this wants to know if you want to play a game and bet a card on the outcome. To be honest, I've only had one person ever ask me to do this, ever, so they're not very common. Unless you make it known that you want to take part in such games and join these kinds of circles, I suppose. Please be careful though. WOPs are not regulated by admins, so if you win and they don't give you the card that they promised, there's really nothing that anyone can do. Most people are honorable, but as always, just be careful. It's all on the honor system, and as with all things like that, you could end up getting burned. Next is Virtual. This simply means things with a minus for the opponent are treated like a plus for you. Minus two power is treated like plus two. Minus attack is treated like plus attack, or even plus or minus pills are treated like plus attack. It's simply for a general message conveyance. You can watch my All-Stars clan review for a better explanation of why some people dislike using virtual, and there should be a little link floating around somewhere, even if it is a much simpler way to say it. Next up is old, olding, and kill shot. This refers to playing a card with zero extra pills. The idea is to gain a pill lead or to cause your opponent to overpill, generally leading to an easier win for you. Some people hate this move, but it's completely legal, so don't feel bad if you use it or if it's used on you. UR has introduced a new ability recently called Kill Shot, specifically to try and combat this overused playstyle, particularly with DR cards. Kill Shot penalizes players who play zero pills by giving your card a bonus to their damage if you have over double their attack, which is very easy to do if your opponent olds. Currently, very few cards have this ability though. Iron Jaw is one of them. Up next is Conditional. This references whether an ability or bonus requires a condition to be used, or varies based on a condition. Conditionals include Courage, Reprisal, Confidence, Revenge, Defeat, Stop, and Backlash. It also includes Support and Growth, since these abilities are not set, but can vary based on the round or on your hand for the match. Killshot is still undetermined, but I would guess that it is not a conditional. The biggest reason for this classification is that cards have only ever had one condition per ability or bonus thus far. So for example, Protection is technically not a conditional, given that the card Lydia exists. Lydia has both Courage and, for all intents and purposes, Protection. Ergo, Protection is not a conditional, but merely an ability name. The Courage ability is active if you play first for the round. You get no ability if you play second. Reprisal is the ability active if you play second, but no ability if it's played first. Confidence, the ability is active if you won the previous round in this match. No ability is um, given to you if you lost the previous round. This is generally considered the worst conditional of them all. Revenge ability is active if you lost the previous round in this match. You get no ability or bonus if you won the previous round. Defeat is only active if you lose this round. No ability or bonus if you win the round. Stop is active if you face a card with SOA. No ability if you are facing any other ability or bonus. Backlash is active if you win the round. The ability is almost always, or should I say is definitely negative. It benefits when facing SOA, or it may cause no issues if played late game. No ability if you lose the round, of course. The support gets plus one for each other card in its clan, up to plus three for all four cards being from the same clan, for all rounds. If there are no other cards and this is an ability and not a bonus, you will still get the base amount. <clears throat> you will not receive this as a bonus if there are no other cards from the same clan. Growth is an ability that allows you to gain plus one for each additional round that you wait, up to plus three until round four. You'll receive the stated value on round one, plus one on round two, plus two on round three, and plus three on round four. Next are SOA, SOB, COB, plus LPD, and plus PPD. These are all shortened forms of ability names. SOA is for Stop Op Ability. This stops the opponent's ability, unless it is protected, as per the skill's bonus, and also triggers the conditional ability of Stop. 
Stop Op Bonus is an ability that stops the opponent's bonus unless it is protected, again by a protection bonus ability. This is current. There is currently no downside to having SOB, aside from facing maybe skills and not actually getting any benefit from it. COB is Copy Op Bonus. This copies the opponent's bonus along with any conditionals and applies them to your card. It copies the text only, so Copying Rescue will give you a bonus based on your card's support. And Frozen's bonus will only work if you are on a revenge round. Plus LPD is plus life per damage. This adds plus X life to you for each damage that you do. Fury damage is included. Minus life, as with a card like Costner from Berserk, does not count. It is only straight up damage. Plus PPD is plus pills per damage. This is the same as plus life per damage, but with pills. Again, only straight up damage. Essentially, you can Fury for the cost of one extra pill, if you have the requisite extra pills already. Next up is DR. This is short for damage reduction, or cards which reduce the damage of an opponent if the opponent wins. Damage is reduced by the amount stated down to the declared minimum. Fury damage is also reduced. So a card with minus 5 damage, min 3, like B Bazooka here, will reduce a 4 damage card to 3, stopping at the minimum, because the minimum is 3. But it would reduce a card doing 10 damage down to 5, by its maximum amount of 5. Our Manip is short for manipulation, often combined with power, attack, and pills, for power manip, attack manip, or pill manip. This can apply to both plus or minus manipulation for each category. Next up is Poison versus Toxin. Recently, you are also introduced the Toxin ability. Many people get confused how this differs from Poison. The difference is that Toxin immediately takes effect, while Poison takes one additional round before beginning. So if you win on round one, Toxin will do damage on all four rounds, while Poison would only do damage on rounds two, three, and four. It's a minor tweak that adds a bit more power. Poison or Toxin will continue to take effect until the minimum is reached. If the minimum is zero, and an opponent KOs you on the same round that Poison or Toxin would KO them, then the match will end in a tie. As a final note, only one of these may ever take effect at a time, and poisoning a second time will replace the previous poison with the newest one, not the best one. As for Heal vs. Regen, with the release of Liliana just this Halloween, we now have the Regen ability. This works in exactly the same fashion as Toxin and Poison, with Regen taking effect the turn it is activated and all rounds after, and Heal taking effect starting from the following round. Heal and Regen will continue until the maximum is reached. Only one of these may ever be in effect at once. However, they will stack with the leader Bridget's ability, as her ability is considered entirely different. And up next we have Cancel, one of the more difficult terminology points. With the coming of Raptors, we were introduced to the newest concept ability addition to UR, Cancel. This is a defensive, not offensive ability. The reason we think of it this way is to help explain how it works. Think of the battle like this. When your cards fight, they use their ability and bonus, which will fall into one of what I consider three categories. This is not official, just my way of explaining it. An attack against the other card, a buff to itself, or an effect, which can be other, perhaps itself or the other card as well. They can be further separated into low and high tiers as well. Abilities and bonuses that are attacks would be things like SOA, SOB, minus attack, minus power, minus life, and minus damage. Buffs to me would include things like plus attack, plus damage, plus power, plus life, and protection. Effects would be things like poison, toxin, heal, plus or minus pills, copy opponent bonus, plus life per damage, recover pills, and cancel. Think of these three categories like the sword, axe, lance triad, and fire emblem. Attacks are greater than effects, which are greater than buffs. Or, in other words, SOA and SOB are greater than cancel, and cancel is greater than protection ability bonus, which is then greater than SOA and SOB. Note that in cases of high level buff of protection, attack, power, or damage, if the card also contains a low level buff, for example, fix it here, the buff to its attack, power, or damage is not protected from SOA and SOB attacks, but it is protected from any other attack. This is why the attack abilities of SOA and SOB are highly sought after. They are higher tier attacks. 
So again, an attack of minus power will not work against Fixit because of the protection. However, SOB against his power plus two bonus will cancel his plus power there. Now, back to protection. Protection stops all attacks against you then and there, but not from buffs your opponents may receive. So protection attack only stops minus attack, which would try to reduce your attack. Plus attack is a buff, so it's not an attack and still buffs the opponent. Protection power stops any minus power abilities against you, but plus power is a buff, so it gets through. Protection stops anything that tries to attack your card, but it does not remove buffs that the other card may have on itself. Protection itself is only a high level buff against attacks. Cancel, however, is a high level effect that pierces both attacks and buffs, including protected things, since protection is a high level buff. It is the higher tier effect. Cancel is an effect or a force field that ignores and wipes anything that comes inside it buffs or attacks related to the target of the cancel. So cancel stops all plus and minus abilities and bonuses related to its target. For example, Zarya has cancel power. If she faces off against Kayla's CR, her cancel power ability, a high level effect, will stop Kayla's CR's bonus protection ability, a high level buff, and then also cancel his minus power ability, a low level attack. The only way to stop cancel is to use SOA or SOB, a high level attack, in order to remove it. This is why I used the attack buff effect illustration to try and explain. For me, it helps immensely to understand the relationship between different abilities and how they interact, even if it may be a bit more difficult to understand. In the end, just be aware that cancel pierces through protection and is meant to be the answer for dealing with protection cards. Next is random and no random. In the past, there were once two types of matches, those which guaranteed the higher attack a win of non-random, and those which did not guarantee, but would slightly weight the win in your favor, random, unless you had over double your opponent's attack value. This is actually where the kill shot ability originates from. Anyway, point is, all matches in ELO, Survivor, DTs, and most events are all in no random mode. You can change the mode, but since I'd estimate pretty much all games are in no random, there's really no reason to use random, unless you want to create a sadistic event. And no, I'm not hitting at anything because I absolutely hate random mode. Last up is order of effects. <clears throat> Generally, this will mean very little. However, there are a few cases when this is very important to know. First, cards get plus damage, then DR is done, then damage is dealt, then plus life occurs, then minus life, then heal and regen, and finally poison and toxin. The times when this matters are, first, one, when you're doing heal or poison missions. Heal comes before poison, so if both are in effect, their poison will always take effect after your heal. Poison also takes effect after damage, so if you do more damage in the following round, you may actually cancel out your poison's usefulness by doing damage that brings your opponent below your own poison's minimum. And two, when trying to KO with minus life against a defeat plus life card. There are very few cards that can go for a minus life KO. Zinfrid, Raven, Ozzy, Drain, etc. If you try to go for a perfect KO and your opponent throws a defeat plus life card, you will do your damage. Then, they will gain their defeat plus life. And finally, your card will use the minus life part of its attack against them. Their plus life card may grant them enough life to survive your KO attempt, even though it would normally fail against an all damage KO attempt. So, be careful. To me, here this is where we see the second basic triad in UR. Damage beats plus or minus life, plus or minus life beats DR, and DR generally beats straight up damage. Well, now you hopefully feel up to date and ready to go. Now you should know all the basics of UR tactics, how their abilities work, and the basic terminology you can expect to see on the message boards. Go forth, rise up, and conquer UR. Wait, I mean conquer everyone else, and remember who taught you the basics. Take it easy on me, please. If you liked this video, feel free to like, share, and comment below. If there was anything you didn't understand, leave a comment below and we'll all help you out the best that we can. 
Also, feel free to leave a comment below with what the most confusing thing in UR has been for you. Who knows, maybe UR will look at this video one day and make some changes because of your feedback. Well, see you in the next video, Rivals. This is Zonia, and you've been in the zone.